Yesterday, Bungie dropped a big, fat, nasty twab that felt know, more like a tidal wave of information than a blog post, and I had to sit with my thoughts for several hours before sifting through all the gravel to find the gems in it worth chatting about. So, let me come out of the gate saying I really appreciate the long last break in silence regarding solid plans for revamping PvP and giving it the love and attention it deserved honestly a long time ago. So credit where it's due, Bungie has always made it a priority to push out updates that address the sandbox in PvP for better or worse, and that attention to the space it doesn't go unnoticed. But I'm also a firm believer that sandbox updates are not a substitute for content, and instead they should accentuate and enhance new content rather than serve as standalone PvP deliverables in any given season. So while many of these changes excite me, I'm also not going to let new updates wipe my memory of the years behind us. All right, I wanna spend the bulk of today's video talking about the competitive division playlist, the new ranked PVP space for players to grind and achieve their best rung on that ladder. And before we dive into that, a polite reminder uh, that December is almost upon us and I'll be covering this year's advent calendar of whiskey from Flaviar on my second channel, which I will amend the description and pinned comment uh, to have a link to those as soon as I get my branding up on it, hopefully this weekend. But if you want to pick up these 24 whiskey tasting samples and go through them with me, or just get your dad or brother or father-in-law something else from Flaviar for Christmas this year, you can do that and uh, make sure that you use the link in the description to take you to Flaviar because that'll let them know that you came from here. And use code TRUEVANGUARD to get a discount on your order and I'll get a kickback. So it's literally a win-win and we will merrily guffaw in our comfy leather chairs and couches sipping whiskey. But, all right, competitive divisions. Let's start with a quick summation of what Bungie told us about uh, this new playlist. This is the place where the sweaty PvP elites are gonna go and snort G Fuel and repeat the same call out three times. He's one, he's one, he's one, flanking, flanking. So anyway, Bungie said that their vision for this space it includes a line in here that stood out to me. They want a player's PvP division to be a core part of their guardian identity. So when they set that standard, my first thought was to ask the question, hey, I wonder how they're going to make your division a part of your identity. That sounds neat. So hang on to that question in the back of your mind and we will circle back to it. Bungie goes on to say that this is going to be a very unforgiving space. They say players who surpass gold and begin to chip away at platinum, adept, and ascendant will represent some of the best Crucible players that our community has to offer. That means that the top three rungs on the ladder are gonna be, I mean, they're gonna be hard to get to and even harder still to keep. At the beginning of the season, you'll have to play seven placement matches, and then the game will give you a starting ladder rung to begin your climb from. And that way, if you're a pretty casual player, you don't have to wait for a few weeks for good players to get out of your division. They will have placed higher and you don't have to worry about encountering them until you improve enough to meet them on their level. Once you start your climb, anytime you gain enough reputation to go on to the next major rung, you'll then have to prove that you deserve to be there by winning two out of your next three matches. If you don't, then you're not allowed into that new division. You stay where you're at. Same thing applies to when you lose enough rep to go down to the next major rung. You'll have to prove you deserve to be in the division that you're at by winning two out of your next three matches in order to keep yourself from getting demoted and falling down a rung. Now, thankfully, there are four major factors that will allow you to progress your rank. It's not just winning and losing. I mean, that's one of the four factors for sure. If you win the match, then that will help your rank. But you can also gain rank points by performing well in the match personally. So if your two teammates get farmed and you lose the match, but you put in work, I mean, you got 12 kills, you only died three times, hey, the game is going to recognize your efforts and consider them. It will also consider things like the relationship between your skill level and the division that you're playing in, and also the relationship between your skill level and that of your opponent. So for example, if you get put into a match where all three of your enemies are exceptional players with higher skill than you, then you're not gonna lose much rank for losing to that team. But on the flip side, if you pull an upset and you win, then the game is gonna be like, holy frick guys, here's a bunch of rank points, good job. The last thing about the ranking system I wanna mention before we move on with the discussion is that Bungie will have a weekly rank decay system once you're in gold or higher. So every week that you don't play in competitive division, your rank is going to go down, down, down. 
And it's not just one match that you have to play. Bungie says that you have to play the required number of matches. So maybe three, maybe five, we don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't care for this. Other games do decay as well, like Apex Legends, for example, but the time required to play to stop that from happening is much more forgiving, much more generous. I would much prefer it if I grinded my butt off to get to my goal, and I would much prefer it if, if I could take a breather, <laughs> you know, show everyone my medal around my neck that shows how high I got and not feel that pressure, right? So maybe if Decay would set in after a month without playing 10 matches or something like that, uh, I would be okay with that, I think. But every week, it just seems like a big commitment. And I'm going to be honest, there are just weeks that I don't want to play Destiny. I love this game. I really do. But I don't want to live in it. I want to go play a ranked Apex matches, or if a new game comes out, or a new season launches in another game, I want to go and immerse myself in it without having to drag myself back to Destiny, play a bunch of warm-up matches, get my team together, go into ranked, and play enough matches to keep my status. I mean, this feels like making someone swim a mile without taking a break, and then reaching down into the pool and be like, hey, congrats, and putting a medal around their neck but telling them they're only allowed to wear that medal as long as they stay in the pool, treading water in the deep end. If you want to get out, that's fine, but we'll take the medal back. That poor swimmer is like, do you know what I just went through? I'm exhausted. Can I hop out? Can I chill? So all this to say, I hope the weekly requirement gets reconsidered, unless the rewards for being at a high rank are good enough to justify the stiff requirements to stay there. Spoiler alert, they're not. And that brings us to the next part of the conversation. Remember that question I asked earlier in the video? Bungie said they wanted your division to be a core part of your guardian's identity. And I asked, how are you gonna make that happen? How is my division going to impact my guardian? When do I get to show off my accomplishments? And Bungie answers that question by saying, that's the neat thing, you don't. Bungie writes this, we don't see division as something to really grind for rewards. We don't want someone to feel the pressure to play tons of games looking for a drop. Please excuse me, but what the frick? You want players to grind for a division rating and then tread water there to keep that rating for absolutely nothing other than the rank itself. I mean, this is a looter shooter. How can there be no loot? And this is something the community has been saying for a long time now, years even. We don't need another Not Forgotten. We're not asking for it. But what we do need is the ability to what they call peacocking. We want to peacock a bit. We want to show off our feathers, you know? If I worked my butt off against all odds to achieve the adept status as a dad gamer in competitive division, then I'm going to want an emblem or a shader that's going to show off that I did it. I am a peacock! You gotta let me fly! There are plenty of reasonable cosmetic rewards to put in the competitive division. That's why similar games offer cosmetic rewards, like Apex Legends offers trackers and emblems for your player card to, to flex and peacock. Bungie could do weapon ornaments for reaching certain tiers. I mean, they did it with the Redrix's Claymore. If you reached the very pinnacle of the ranked grind on that first ranked season back during Warmind, then you would get the Redrix's Claymore ornament. I got mine, and to this day, it's one of the most exclusive things that I can flex. Imagine if each season offered a simple ornament that changed the color scheme of a gun or put the Crucible logo on the gun somewhere, something like that, and each season brings a new PvP gun. So for example, this season's ranked ornament for reaching, you know, say Platinum, could be an ornament for the Out of Bounds SMG. I mean, you've got the Frozen Orbit, you've got whatever next season's Crucible drop is going to be. That would be great, or an ornament for the Rose, which I'll get to in a minute. But Destiny has tons of great cosmetic items that they could, and absolutely should, put in different rungs of the Division grind, like ships, shaders, emblems, emotes, ghost projections, ornaments for weapons, and armor, and more. I'm gonna call it right now, that if things like this don't find their way into the Division playlist, then I don't see how it can be a long-term success. I mean, if you put that stuff in there, I'm gonna go get my team together. We're gonna to grind and refine our builds and styles until we can get to where we wanna be, I promise you that. Now, a couple of quick things to note. DMG has openly stated on Twitter, you know, Twitter, which may still be up at the time of you watching this. Maybe Twitter is a distant memory, lost to all space and time now, I'm not sure, but DMG noted, that they are open to cosmetic rewards. And that's definitely good. But I also know that game development is slow. So if it is not in the works right now and it's just a thought, 
then it won't be in the game most likely for another year. So set your expectations accordingly. Unless they get a team working on designing unique division rewards right now and make it a priority, then at this point, it's nothing more than a pipe dream until otherwise stated. The other thing worth noting is that competitive divisions will have the Rose Hand Cannon as a reward, but it's not a performance-based reward. You play, and you can get one Rose per character per week. It will shoot like a 140, but allow you to move like a 150. It sounds like it's going to be amazing. But again, it's not farmable, and it isn't at all related to how good you are. And the last thing worth noting is that from reading this TWAB post, it seems like Bungie is saying that their skill-based matchmaking system will be in competitive division, which is funny because they say it's a true ladder system. Now, a ladder system and SBMM are fundamentally different systems, so I'm not sure about those two things coexisting peacefully. A ladder system is a dynamic skill-based system where you fight people, you match people on the same rung as you, and if you beat them, you start to climb higher, you start to climb higher, so eventually the community kind of sorts out who the good players are and who they aren't. And ultimately you end up with this hierarchy that is a variable system that depends on the players themselves. Skill-based matchmaking is a different system where the game itself dictates your skill level. It comes up with a value for you that we can't see and it measures it by a certain set of predetermined criteria and matches you against uh, other players that it thinks are a close match for you. Now that is fundamentally different than a ladder system. It has started to fracture the, the community into different groupings of its own instead of allowing the community to sift through themselves to form that hierarchy. So the idea of SBMM and a true ladder system coexisting in the same playlist is counterintuitive. I don't think those two things can coexist peacefully. So we'll see how that plays out, but that's a somewhat of a concern of mine. So there you have it, competitive division. I'm definitely excited about this, but I do absolutely believe there is more work to be done at this point to make it something people will consistently interact with. But what do you think? Are you gonna play competitive division? Will you do it for no rewards? And will you continue to play it every single week to maintain your division rating? Let me know in the comments below, and just remember, if you're a casual player, then you want this playlist to succeed. Because the more elite players are playing that playlist, the less they're playing the other ones. And so many casual gamers say over and over that they only enjoy the game when the sweaty elites are nowhere to be found. So this is a literal win-win for both sides of the community if it succeeds. So give your feedback, let Bungie know what you think, and thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a like on it and consider subscribing for additional Destiny 2 content. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.